how have I never thought to use ink refills like this before? Sure, anybody can ink blend a piece of paper to make it feel old and worn, but this is different. I'm always wanting vintage papers or things that look old. The more of my mom's pieces that I use, the more attracted I am to using something that has that aged feel to it. But I don't always want it to be a piece of paper. So it got me thinking, and sorry if you're gonna hear the leaves crunching underneath me, but it's fall, and so you'll have the pretty scenery behind me. But it got me thinking about these leaves that I'm stepping on right now. How can I create this kind of a worn look? You know, this kind of a feel. So I went onto Amazon and I found a box that was inexpensive of just unused tea bags. The key was not to have them glue and that I could very easily remove the string. And then I thought, well, what else do I have in my room that I could use to dye them? You're going to want to add the writing either before or after. I use archival ink. You can use walnut or ground espresso, whichever works for you. First, I just took out my old paper stain and I kind of flicked a little bit of that down. But then I ended up using my espresso, my ground espresso ink refill. This way we're getting it out of the drawer and actually using it in projects, adding one or two drops onto your glass mat. I like to add a little bit of water because it gives me just a little bit more to play with here. But one of the cool things about it is I don't want to dilute it too much because I want to have that intensity in certain spots. And I thought that this would be kind of cool because a tea bag is kind of fabric-like, it's a little bit more durable than paper. The thing that's neat is the way that the ink kind of wicks out. And then once I had that look down, then I decided, what if I approached it with a little bit more of kind of like an organic muted feel? The cool thing about that was I added a lot more water and then dragged my tea bags through there. When they dried, I wasn't really sure what it would look like, but they each had unique little spots which were perfect. And it's great because now I have some blank ones that if I wanna add writing, I can, and if I don't, then I can just use them as is. You can also take other things like bubble wrap or egg cartons and create prints on that. Maybe I'll even do some gel printing with these. Hmm, that's actually an idea. <laughs> The key here is that now I have options and when I need something that's got that worn vintage look to it, I can make it at a moment's notice and that's priceless to me because I'm not stocking my room with endless stuff that I don't need. And best part, I'm using ink refills, something that I already have in a new way. I did this video once that has nine different ways of using ink refills. My personal favorite are number three, number five, and number nine. Click the video that you see right here to get started. It's in a short little playlist with some unique ideas that I think would stretch the way that you use your ink refills in your stash.